Hey, hey, what's up guys? What a fantastic E3, even though it was a bit cringy to... <sighs> Quite some cringe, cringe-worthy stuff happening at E3, for example, <coughs> EA. <clears throat> Next. Let's start on with my top 30 games that exactly what I said 30 games, which is out absolutely huge and I gotta say I'm looking forward to it and I want to know what is next for the future of video games even though we're now gonna go to the next generation which is not confirmed yet but Microsoft has just confirmed that they're working on Project Scarlet. Well in my opinion Microsoft Give us some good exclusives, not just a new generation of games. Even though Sony, uh, PlayStation is kicking your ass, but Microsoft didn't manage to get this shit together. But Microsoft did bring it, and I'll mention their games here in just a bit. So let's start off with my top 30 games. 30, Hitman 2. Um, Hitman 2 looks cool. I just hope to see if Hitman is still ha is still famous for what it does best and what it, and what it actually is known for. Even though I will throw in an honorable mention here, no Splinter Cell game, which kind of sucks. 29, Dead or Alive 6. Since they announced it, um, I thought it, my friend said that the franchise was dead. Number 28, Soul Calibur 6. And Soul Calibur 6, we were finally got ourselves a story trailer which is kind of like kind of like a reboot but a retold story from like the very beginning of Soul Calibur 1. Uh, Battlefield 5 it look I'll, I'll say this right now it looks really good but I don't trust EA. Dice please don't fuck this up. And here's the thing EA stop investing with money with other investors because that's the reason why they hate you and speak about another game from EA Anthem it looks great. It looks like to me like a Mass Effect game done right. Let's see if Bioware does redeem themselves after their disappointing Mass Effect Andromeda game. I'll hope this, this actually redeems Bioware and a little bit of VA. Just please don't add microtransactions even though they just confirmed they're going to add microtransactions only for cosmetic stuff. So Remedy's next project, Control, which is like a mind-bending game which to me looks completely insane and this kind of like follows up a little bit of Quantum Break but much more different but I hope this one doesn't have cuts, long ass cut scenes and just focuses on the action. The Elder Scrolls 6. Why did I put it high up on the list? We got a teaser. That's all we got. Even though what it sucks is this is going to be a next gen console so I hope this releases in 2020. Starfield. It looks good but it's also next generation uh, title so Shit. Doom Eternal. Oh, uh, wow. Uh, now, uh, hell has ris uh, ro rose down all the way down to Earth, and Doom Guy has to save the day and save the planet as much as he can. Starlink, Battle for Atlas. But this one, a Switch exclusive where you can play as Star Fox, so this pretty much teases that Star Fox is going to be in the game. Even though there was rumored of a Star Fox game, well, this is it right here, kind of. Super Mario Party. I hope this Super this Mario Party game does much better than the previous Mario Party games. Even though it's cheesy mini games that has happened in the past, I hope this one does much more better than the previous games. Fallout 76. Even though this is a multiplayer uh, Fallout game, I hope they add more single player campaign to this. And from the looks of it, it's coming out this year, so yeah. Rage 2. It looks great, and it's its software's um, game with, um, with a little bit of elements of Doom and Wolfenstein. I, it looked really good because this is to me the best Mad Max game done better. Um, Dying Light 2, even though it's another zombie game, but this one, we're going to see different hybrids of zombies and much more smarter zombies. And to me, it looks good, but I hope this one adds more, um, different zombie hybrids in, in this game. So, I'm actually looking forward to playing it. Just Cause 4. It looks cool, very destructive, but I hope this one does focus a little bit more on the story, even though everybody doesn't care about the story, but has more elements of, like, you know, what it does best from previous installment. I hope this one's a lot more bigger, better, and much more badass. In Metro Exodus looks really, really good. Really, really good. It's now, instead of going underground, now you can go up on the wasteland of Earth. Number 14, Skull and Bones. It looks good, and to me, this follows suit a little bit of Assassin's Creed 4, and I'm actually looking forward to it, even though it sucks that it got delayed till 2019. Damn it, but I hope this does manage to do better. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, I'm pissed off that they're making another Assassin's Creed game yearly again, but what I liked about this one, it takes place in Sparta. I have to play as one character, but two characters, a female and a male character, so I'm looking forward to it. And I hope it does much better. Death Stranding. Even though we got some small glimpses of the gameplay, we never get to see some more action of the gameplay. 
it looks good, but I just hope Hideo Kojima uh, manages to do exactly justice of like, you know, a little bit of Silent Hills, but a little bit of um, Metal Gear Solid gameplay in this. I want to know what when it's going to be released, even though I don't have a PS4. Uh, Resident Evil Remake. Resident Evil 2 Remake. Oh, it looks good. No wonder why it was quiet for the past couple of years. And now after we got an announcement, a trailer, and a release date, I want to play it. Number 10, Devil May Cry 5. Oh man, I've been waiting for this game for 5 years. Technically 10. Well, there we go. And I'm happy that the game is back from the dead. And this time... Nero is back, um, even though with the different hairdo. Uh, you get to see hints that Virgil's pretty much behind all this. Dante is back and much more older. We don't get to see much, much of him, but we only get to see him riding a bike. I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm happy that it's not following the Dark Souls kind of elements, which is good. And yeah, I'm, I'm so happy that this franchise is back from the dead. I'm actually looking forward to see what Capcom has in store for Devil May Cry 5. Number 9, Beyond Good and Evil 2. Wow, it looks amazing. It looks fucking amazing. And I hope Ubisoft puts all their hard work and dedication. And then with Joseph Gordon-Levitt's like, you know, doing this part of put your music in order to add this into the video game. I hope we get great soundtracks just like we did in Guardians of the Galaxy. Let's see if this game does manage to blow everybody's minds because it did blow my mind, but gameplay wise and how the world is and how you can travel from different places, I hope this game manages to do much better than the first one. Even though the first one was kind of a cult classic, I do want to play the first one in order to understand the plot. But this one's actually a prequel, so I hope this one does much better. Number eight, Ghost of Tsushima. Wow. Sucker Punch. This game looks amazing and I gotta say, it's to me... One of the most cinematogra uh, cinematography in video games, it gets overlooked, but here the cinematography of how the way you fight um, characters outside and, and, and especially with cherry blossoms falling on uh, underneath you is cool. And Last of Us Part 2, even though I didn't even see the gameplay itself looks amazing and to me, I think uh, Naughty Dog is putting their, all their hard work and dedication on this game and it shows. Joel is not a playable character on this one, but now we got Ellie as a fully playable character. She's older now, so she, you can fully control with her, but still. Number six, Spider-Man. This is Marvel's biggest um, announcement and that came out six, two years ago. I just hope it manages to do well with other superhero games because lately Marvel hasn't done a great game in quite a, quite some time. No more childish games Mar Marvel and stop being konami on pretty much almost every developer and publisher. Let them do what they have to do in order for them to make this game a 10 out of 10. And, I, and to me, after seeing this trailer, it looks like a 10 out of 10 game. And I hope it does that. Number 5, Halo Infinite. This better not be a reboot. This better be a continuation of Halo 5. It looks like a reboot, but please don't let that be the case, 343 Industries. I'm looking forward to it, and I hope this is not going to be released for the next generation. I hope this will be Xbox One's final game before the next generation. Number 4, Gears of War 5. I've been waiting for, well, technically now Gears 5. Wow. Um... I don't understand why the fan base doesn't learn the appreciation of how Gears of War 4 was great. Uh, was To me, Gears of War 4 is actually my third favorite game in the franchise, right behind Gears 2 and Gears 3. To me, Gears of War 4 was to me like The Force Awakens in the franchise. No offense, I like Kate Diaz as a character. I just hope we do get to play as JD and we get an explanation of what happened to his uh, face and his arm. Um, and then also, um, why did Marcus shave? He doesn't look old. He looks more younger. JD looks more older now, so... And I wonder who died that motivated Kate to pretty much fix everything. Kingdom Hearts 3. Absolutely amazing. We're going to get to go to different Pixar franchises like Monster Zing, Toy Story, Frozen, Pirates of the Caribbean, Wreck-It Ralph, and many others. Oh man, I, I really want to play both Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, a couple of its spin-offs. Number 2, Cyberpunk 77. 2077. Wow, absolutely fucking amazing. Um, the trailer looks good, but from what I heard from other journalists and from other people who demoed the game, it's absolutely mind-blowing. Um, I do, I am looking forward to this game, and to me, Microsoft ending their conference with this game, 
in my opinion, Microsoft nailed that out of the park in the conference much more than Sony. I like Sony's press conference, but even though it was shifting back and forth, okay, we're going to change rooms so you can see how it, how immersed it immersed the game's going to be and how the way you're going to be feeling in the environment. But to me, Microsoft actually blew it out of the park, especially with Cyberpunk 77, 2077. I hope CD Projekt Red is work, putting all their hard work and dedication in this game. And to me, I hope this is going to be... I don't know if this is going to be an Xbox One or a PS4 um, exclude, uh, P Xbox One or, uh, X or also for different kind of game for, uh, consoles. If this becomes the killer app of Xbox One, I hope this one manages to shut everybody up. And I hope that CD Projekt Red does their best in order to make this game one of the, a big masterpiece like they did with The Witcher 3. And that's all about it. Um, even though these were two, these two games were tough with C with uh, Cyberpunk seventy seven and with another game, I will put in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate number one. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate to me, putting in all sixty five plus Omega characters in the game and adding back previous stages from previous um, Super Smash Brothers, especially Melee, but to me. We're gonna have elements of melee, and to me, uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee is my third favorite fighting game, third favorite game of all time, and my number one favorite fighting game of all time. I hope this will be my favorite fighting game of all time, and to me, having all the characters from all the previous games is absolutely mind blowing, and especially adding two new characters, like no, technically three new characters: Omega, uh, Omega Peach's um, next character, Daisy, which looks cool. Um, Adding in the Splatoon characters, which is the Inklings, looks cool. And then the, the one that I knew that was coming, and I knew it was coming soon, Ridley. And Ridley looks sick as hell, and I'm actually happy to see that. I hope they add soon enough DLC characters or more characters in the franchise, and I hope that they, they do release over 70 to 75 characters. I hope they add King K. Rule, Tails, um, Andros. Um, whatever they can in order to bring it in. Simon Belmont, for example, from Castlevania 4 would be cool. And yeah, that's about it. And Super Smash Bros. Ultimate looks amazing, and I can't believe it's actually six months away from coming out. And um, what sucks is I don't have a Switch, but I will save up for a Switch, and the only sole reason why I want to get a Switch is because of Smash Brothers. Come on, who doesn't want to get a Switch without having the Smash Brothers? And on the go too, which is absolutely cool. Even though the first one was actually Super Smash Brothers for the 3DS, which is cool. But then this one with set over 65 characters, absolutely mind blowing. And then adding in a bunch of new state, a bunch of the stages from previous games, and then adding some different elements from Millie. That's awesome. And yeah, to me, E3 was absolutely fantastic. I will put in some dishonorable mentions here from Nintendo. They never did reveal Donkey Kong Country 3, which sucks. Metroid Prime 4, which was MIA. I hope Bandai Namco and Nintendo are working their hardest to make this game cool. And F-Zero, which sucks to me, and I'm mad. But anyways, guys, that's end it. Um, next up after this, I'm going to be doing my Marvel vs. Capcom infant review. My promise. I'm not going to break my promise, guys. It's next after this. So stay tuned next time for Nerd of the 90s. E3 2018 was cool, even though it was a bit cringy, especially with EA and Square Enix and a little bit on Bethesda. But to me, E3 2011, it was my, my favorite E3 of all time. So I hope uh, with this E3, my second favorite of all. I just hope the next generation and these games that have been announced are not disappointments but are much more higher than everything. Especially you EA, get your shit together, stop fucking around. And same with you Square Enix, give us the game, uh, announce, just at least give us, you know, like spread the word, like what happened to these games and you know, since you've been all hush hush. Well anyways guys, that ends it up. I'll see you guys next time. Nerd of the 90s out.